welcome. I'm Dr. Mark Murphy, and I am here just to say first and foremost, congratulations to all of you. This is such an exciting time. This Medit i700 launch is incredible. Don't get me wrong, I loved my i500, but these quantum level improvements in the capabilities for the software and the hardware are really exciting. You guys have to be super stoked to be doing this right now. I wanted to talk just a little bit about the features, advantages, and benefits of the new i700 handpiece for the scanner. First off, it's lighter. Second, it's smaller, and yet the aperture down here has a little bit wider opening that allows you to pick up more of the surface area. So you get a little bit of the buckle and the lingual at the same time. And this tip, watch this, comes off, you can reverse it like that, and it still works. Incredible. It's also got an on-off switch here. You expect that, but then it's got a button that kind of acts like a mouse. You can scroll through different capabilities on the software and the applications that you want. It's lighter, twice as fast as the original. Nuts case, just nuts. And then it's got this little button down here that you might not be able to see, but it actually lights up when it's disinfecting itself on the inside. It's the only scanner of its type that has a self-disinfecting UVC light on the inside. This thing is bonkers. Not only does the new i700 have an incredible scanner interface, the actual hardware itself, the component, but the software is intuitive as well. It's so much easier to use. It's got face scan. It's got instant margination for crown preparations. It can scan implant bodies, denture impressions. It's got some special filtering for picking up soft tissue, making it look very, very natural. I'm really excited to talk to you today, not just about the i700 scanner, not just about the software, but we get to complete that package by showing you a dental sleep medicine case where we take a full arch upper impression and a full arch lower impression as well as a protrusive bite registration. We'll be able to tell the entire story that helps us see how we can take a scanner like this and all of the capabilities it has and put them all to use on one case. Now, it's fun for me because I've been around dental sleep medicine a long time. 30 years ago, I made my first sleep appliance teaching with Keith Thornton down at the Panky Institute. So that ages me and takes me way back. And years and years ago, I've worked with several different scanning systems over the years and watched them evolve and improve and become more precise and certainly more intuitive. This version, the Medit i700, has so many capabilities that make it user-friendly and easy for us to apply full arch impression taking in lickety split time. So let's take a little journey together and look at what it is to scan an upper and a lower arch and a bite registration so that we could submit a case online and get all of that dentistry done as quickly as possible. Hi, what I'd like to show you now is really how we would do a case for dental sleep medicine. And it's important that we walk through all the steps first verbally so that you just can follow along because I'm gonna be turned this way paying attention to our patient Denise, say hello Denise. There you go. And you'll be seeing everything that we're doing on the screen as well as that we're doing in the mouth intraorally. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the software and we're gonna open that up and make sure that we've got everything set up to do a dental sleep medicine case. There's all kinds of applications and settings on this computer and they can teach you all about that. My narrow focus is gonna be talking about dental sleep medicine. So I'll need an upper and a lower full arch impression model that's scanned and then I'm gonna need a bite relationship taken using a George gauge that you'll see over there in a few minutes. So let's go over to the computer and make sure that we set ourselves up for the right thing. I come down to the bottom here and I click on arch. Then I'm gonna click on maxilla and I'm gonna tell the computer over here that it's an anti-snoring device. That's an oral appliance for dental sleep medicine. Then I'll click on the mandible and I'll tell it that it's also an anti-snoring appliance. And then I can come up here to the top right and you'll see that it's registering all the information that our test patient Denise is already in the software and it's ready to scan. It opens up the software and all it's going to be waiting to do after it connects to the scanner is waiting for me to press the magic blue button and all kinds of cool things happen. I think we pointed that out already before but look how that ultraviolet light just went on and you can see that there. It's now actually disinfecting all the internal components of the scanner. This is so cool. There's just no other scanner like this out there. Really neat. All right, so let's go ahead and scan the maxilla. You'll notice that there's a little bit of music. You can see how quickly it starts to pick up the imaging. So that was a minute and 50 seconds. And if we were trying to do that with impression material, it would have taken two and a half minutes. Now we can take a look at this and say I want to pick up a couple little spots here on the buckle on her right side as well as on her left side. So let's go back in and get those. 
Now you do need to capture a little bit of the soft tissue up there where I'm at right now because we'll need that for the bite relationship. Let's go back and check that on the right side and make sure we've got that too. Oh yeah, we're good there. Okay. The good news about the software is when you've got a contour and it's rolling and it's picked up some of the data, it'll finish contouring that in towards the cervical edge. So it'll give us all the available data that we need and it'll fill in any of those little idiosyncrasies. You can't have big holes in teeth, but little teeny spots near the cervical will not be earth shattering for you. And now it's optimizing that picture for us a little bit. So now we've got a total scan time so far of three minutes and 40 seconds for an upper and lower impression. That's pretty darn good. So now we've already taken uh, Denise's bite relationship. We had her go forward and backwards a few times. We recorded a range of motion and we're gonna set her at about 50% of a range of motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that in Denise and close together in that. Good, is that comfortable? Okay, hold that right there and then try to keep that nice and still. I'm gonna pull on your cheeks and go in there just like we were when we were scanning, but try not to let anything move. So you'll notice that we hear that same sort of noise and then there'll be a nice little bing when you hear the two arches coming together. So what we've got now is we've got the upper and lower arch have both been taken. I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna go ahead and tell this thing to complete all of its acquisition and it'll start processing. Now this part always takes a couple of minutes. I've decided on a base like this for no particular reason. I just consistency in terms of how we fill them a minimum base height, I confirm that. And it's gonna start processing. Once it does, then we'll have the freedom to go ahead and take that model that we've got, upper and lower, protrusive bite relationship, and send that off to Persona Sleep Technologies and order our case. So now that we got it to this stage, it's built the base models for us and everything like that, we would simply come over here to order and when we click on this, it'll open up the ordering capability and you will have already partnered with your device manufacturer. So I'd be sending this case off to Prosomnus for manufacturing, for example, and it'll uh, hit the internet and be there within seconds. Now we actually have an online prescription form that we use with Prosomnus Sleep Technologies or your device manufacturer, and you'll send that off at the same time. So whether there's a portal or an online prescription, the file itself and the prescription information will both arrive digitally, electronically, within seconds. Really kind of neat. Saves you a couple, three days of production time and gets the patient into treatment a little faster. So what we've done now is we've gone ahead and we've delivered Denise's case. Uh, you may remember the digital case that we did. And so she's just gonna go ahead and pop those back in there. Perfect. The good news is they dropped right in and fit right in beautifully. We've got her extra arches in here. She's got a nice little box with Persomnus and a personal case and she's all set to go. And we got those back in pretty quick time. Yes. And they fit comfortably and everything felt great? It felt great. Awesome, felt okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Murphy, the lead faculty for clinical education at Prosomnus Sleep Technologies. I get asked all the time, how do I close more patients into oral appliance therapy? Well, I'd like to give you a few little tips and tricks that have worked really well for me and for lots of other people that I've spent some time talking to and coaching a little bit in doing this. I really wanna talk about three things. One, that it's medicine, not dentistry. The second thing I wanna talk about is that patients have three questions in their heads that they really want answers to. And if we give them those answers appropriately and distinctly, we have a better chance of closing them. And then finally, I wanna give you a little bit of a talk track of how to bring up the conversation appropriately about money. So first, it's medicine, not dentistry. Anytime you're trying to decide how you should approach a patient, a conversation, or anything in dental sleep medicine, try to remember you're not a dentist. At that time, you're a durable medical equipment provider responding to a prescription that a physician wrote for you. And it's not really dentistry anymore. Oh, it requires dental skills for certain. But think about dentistry and how we think about dental insurance and how we think about case acceptance and how we think about talking to our patients about things because most insurances stop at 12 or $1,500. In fact, it's not insurance in dentistry really at all because insurance in the dictionary says when there's a third party taking the risk, for a catastrophic loss. 
And the last time I checked, it is more money than I have in my wallet, but $1,200 to $1,500 is not a catastrophe. So we're in medicine. And when you go to the physician, they don't say, here's your co-payment, here's what it's gonna cost you, here's what's gonna be out of pocket. Instead, they just say, we're gonna draw some blood today and get an x-ray. And you say, okay. So I want you to think medicine, not dentistry. The second thing is the questions that the patients have in their mind. When you start to talk about a disease that's as serious as obstructive sleep apnea, that has the comorbidities and the challenges and the life expectancy compromise that we're all so familiar with, patients start to get nervous. Patients start to get worried. They're certainly interested. And with the information you're giving them, they come to believe and trust in you as a healthcare provider that you're talking to them about something that's very important to them, their family, and their life expectancy. So they know it's serious. So ask and answer these three questions for them. Do they have this disease? Is it serious? And can it be treated? That's what patients want to know in medicine. They've studied this, unlike dentistry, because dentistry is such a small part of the healthcare dollar, five to 6%. Medicine has spent far more time understanding the patient pathway. Do I have this disease? Well, you're certainly at high risk, Mrs. Jones. The only way we can know for sure is to get you tested. So let me go ahead and make this referral to Dr. So-and-so or to order up this sleep test or get you started on that pathway and we can find out. Don't talk about the money, don't talk about the co-payments, don't talk about all that. Tell them they need this. There's a medical need for this particular test. Assume they will go forward. Don't trade with yourself. Don't compromise their ability to move forward in the healthcare model. Second, is it serious? Well, I have a set of eight slides, which I'm happy to send you. Just email me and I will do that. Eight slides that I use to help educate my patients about dental sleep medicine. And it talks about the comorbidities and the higher risk. But I really emphasize that a patient with obstructive sleep apnea is 23 times more likely to have a heart attack, four times more likely to have a stroke, and five times more likely to die of COVID if they get that virus disease. Yes, it's serious. And so the only way we can find out if you have this is to get a test. Yes, you know it's serious. Can we treat it? I love to show testimonial videos, tell testimonial stories about patients, about texts I've gotten, photographs of dogs staying in bed because the, the patient wasn't snoring anymore, or husbands and wives getting back together in the bedroom, or people sleeping better, getting more rest, feeling more functional during the day and having higher cognitive skills. It's fantastic stuff. But I also love to do a little snore test. And I said, well, one of the things I like to show you, Mrs. Jones, is if you lean your head back and make a little snoring sound, pinch your nose, go ahead and do that. And Mrs. Jones does that. And I say, now do the same thing again, but stick your jaw forward. That's a lot harder, isn't it? And the patient goes, yes, it is. I go, that's what we plan on doing for you. I plan on helping find the right position to hold your jaw forward a little bit so that it'll open the airway in the back. And if we can do that and find the right spot together, then I might be able to get you to not just stop snoring, but get you to better oxygenate and get better air while you're sleeping at night. Those are two critical things. The final thing that I talked with you about doing is to make sure that you have a talk track about money. And when patients say, how much does this cost? Here's what I hear them say. Hey, you're a dentist and everything costs me a lot of money out of pocket. And so what is this gonna cost me out of pocket? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I dodge that question and I really don't answer it ever the first time. When a patient says to me, how much does this cost? I remind them that I'm acting in the medical model, not the dental model. And I simply answer, well, actually, it's covered under your medical plan, not your dental insurance. And most patients go, oh, OK. See, I'm reminding them that for a moment here, I'm not their dentist talking to them about a crown or a filling or a bridge or an implant or something they need to have done. Instead, I'm talking about medically necessary treatments and tests. And if I just nudge them back into that medical environment and thinking, most patients say, yep, let's go forward. But let's not talk about those patients. Those are the easy ones. Let's talk about the patient who says, well, oh, no, I hear you. I understand it's my medical insurance, but I have a $5,000 deductible and I haven't used any of it this year. This is gonna cost me a bundle out of my pocket. How much will this cost? This is where it gets a little tricky. But I have a pretty simple answer that I think is gonna work for you. I say to the patient, well, Mrs. Jones, you're in luck. Because you've got XYZ insurance, I happen to be in network with them. 
The maximum allowable fee that they have is, and I put out some number, 2300, 2500, whatever your number is. And I say, so that's the most that you could possibly pay out of pocket because that's what they allow. Now what the patient heard me say was, I know you don't know me well enough or trust me enough to be quoting a fair fee for what this is and you have no idea what it should cost, but guess what? There's a third party out there that you do trust your medical insurance and they've set a fair fee for this particular procedure at 2400 or 2600 or whatever your number is. I'm not trying to tell you your number, I'm just trying to make an equation for you of how you balance this out in the patient's mind. But once we say to them, there's this third party that you trust, we don't use those words, and I'm in network with that third party and they allow this, the patient goes, oh, okay, that must be a fair fee. Now those aren't the exact words they have, but think about it in the patient's mind. If you were to say, well, how much does that shoulder surgery cost that you're talking about? And you said, don't worry, I'm in network, and we're gonna take whatever your insurance pays for that as a payment in full. Oh, okay, great. You might have a co-payment or a deductible or something like that. That puts the patient at ease to know that they're at least going to be in a fair place when it comes to looking at those fees. So remember, you're in medicine, not dentistry when you're doing dental sleep. Also, patients have three questions. Is it serious? Okay, do I have this disease? And can you treat this? And then finally, have a talk track and be prepared. Don't burden people with signed documents and COBs and how much money they're going to owe and down payments. Treat them like they're in medicine, because that's what this is. You're gonna close more cases this way.